The next special tests that we're going to be doing are for the patella femoral injuries. Uh, the first one that we're going to be doing is going to be for the uh, Q angle measurement. And for this one, the patient is going to be uh, supine uh, with the knee extended um, and the foot in neutral. Uh, they can also be in a standing position. Uh, they, uh, uh, again, with their shoulders, uh, uh, shoulder width apart would be a modification. Or you can compare the two, uh, weight bearing to non weight bearing. Um, and then uh, the athletic trainers can stand either anterior or lateral to the patient. And they're going to mark, um, before you begin, you're going to mark uh, three, point, three points. Uh, first one is going to be on the ASIS. The next point is going to be in the center of the patella. And the third point that I've marked is going to be the uh, top of the tibial tuberosity. Um, you are also going to need a uh, goniometer <coughs> for this. Uh, <coughs> we're going to align the goniometer, uh, the fulcrum or the cent center over the center of the patella. Uh, the bottom part is going to go from down through the point that you have on the tibial tuberosity. And the top of the goniometer is going to go up towards the um, ASIS uh, on the hip. And then what we're going to do is we're going to look at that measurement uh, between that angle, which is called the Q angle. And what we're looking for, uh, normal for males, is going to be 13 degrees. Normal for females is going to be 18 degrees, a little bit larger because of their wider hips. If it is lower than normal, then that could be indication for uh, patella alta or chondromalacia. If it's greater than normal for males or female, then that could indicate a patella femoral dysfunction, genuvalgum, increased uh, ex external tibia torsion, or some of the injuries that could be associated with that, or any other patellofemoral uh, pathology. Okay, the next special test that we're going to be doing is called the apprehension test. For this one, the patient is going to be supine with the knee extended. Uh, the athletic trainer is going to uh, stand uh, lateral to the knee. Uh, and what we're going to do is we are going to uh, uh, grasp the medial border of the patella uh, with uh, both hands. And what we're going to do is we're going to, while they're relaxed, especially for the quadriceps, uh, we're going to try to uh, move the patella laterally as far as possible. But do not dislocate the patella. If um, the patient uh, contracts the quad or they have apprehensive actions uh, you know, with their knee or with themselves, this would be a positive indication for a patellar dislocation or subluxation. The next special test that we're going to do for the patella foral femoral injuries is called the Fairbanks apprehension test. Uh, like the apprehension test, we're going to have the patient uh, supine with the knee extended. Uh, the athletic trainer can uh, stand uh, medially, uh, again placing uh, the uh, thumbs on the um, medial side of the knee. And what we're going to be doing for this one is we're going to passively flex the knee to about as we're doing that, we're going to be um, at about 30 degrees. We're going to apply uh, lateral pressure to the patella, uh, moving the patella laterally as far as possible, again, without uh, dislocating. Uh, so we can uh, you know, passively extend the knee. Oh, let me do that one over. I think you go up to start at 
30. And then you go down to extension, passively extended. And then that's where you, so I think you're testing it at both. Passively flex the knee to 90, then move it laterally while passively extended. Okay. Take two. The next special test that we're going to be doing is called the Fairbanks Apprehension Test. For this one, the patient is going to be supine with the knee extended. Uh, and then the athletic trainer is going to stand uh, medially and uh, we are going to um, passively uh, flex the knee to about 30 degrees and while we do this uh, we are going to uh, be moving our with our thumbs on the medial side of the patella we're going to be applying uh, lateral force to the patella as we passively extend the knee towards the table. Back down to zero. And if the, this uh, patient's uh, quads contract or there's any apprehension, this would be an indication for patellar dislocation or subluxation. The next special test that we're going to be doing is called the uh, patellar tilt assessment. For this one, the patient is going to be in a supine position with the knee extended with the femoral condyles parallel to the table. The athletic trainer can stand lateral or medial to the knee, patella, and what we're going to be doing using our thumb and index finger, the index finger is going to be pulling uh, on the, up on the lateral side and we're going to be pulling down on the medial side, thus tilting the patella. Uh, normally, the lateral border raises uh, 0 to 15 degrees. If it's hypermobile, hy excuse me, hypomobile, less than 0, or, or it could be hypermobile, greater than 15 degrees. If a tilt is less than 0 degrees, this indicates tightness of the lateral restraints, uh, thus they have hypermobile medial glide. If the tilt is greater than 15 degrees, then this is uh, associated with uh, anterior knee pain. The next special test that we're going to be doing is the medial and lateral patellar glide test. For this, the patient is supine uh, with a bolster under the knee. This will allow the knee to uh, flex about 30 degrees. Uh, the athletic trainer will stand lateral to the knee. Uh, first, we are going to ap uh, apply a uh, medial glide, uh, grasping the patella and moving it medially. Um, this places stress, uh, stresses on the lateral retinaculum and soft tissue. Uh, normally, a positive test would indicate that the, pos the patella should glide about two to three uh, quadrants. Each of these quadrants is about a, a, a half of its width, the patella's width, uh, medially. If movement is less than one quadrant, uh, then it's hypomobile, medial glide. This is indication for a tight lateral retinaculum or IT band. Uh, if it's greater than two quadrants, then that would be um, indicate that there, it's hypermobile, medial glide. Uh, we can also do a lateral glide uh, to the patella, again move, push it on the lateral side. Uh, and this lateral glide moves, the places stress on the medial retinaculum, the VMO, and the medial cap capsule. Uh, the, with the lateral glide, normal, normal motion is about 0.5 to 2 quadrants of the patella. Uh, if it's less than that, then it's hypomobile lateral glide, which is indicated of uh, tight medial restraints um, or medial uh, patella femoral ligament um, pathology. If the lateral movement is greater than two quadrants, then this is a hypermobile lateral glide, suggested of laxity of the medial restraints. Uh, a lot of times the hypermobile is uh, more common than hypermobile glides. Uh, also, 
Uh, it's important to note that hypermobile uh, glides, knee, patellas, uh, may increase the risk for patellar uh, dislocations. 